Hey, what are some semi companies you know or everyone knows? Um, AMD, NVIDIA, TSM, Mu. There are also some not so popular but very important ones like NXPI and LRCX. Yep, these names don't shine as much as the one that I just mentioned, but definitely have a lot of room to grow in my opinion. So do you have any idea who supply their machi machinery for FAB? I remember it's a weird name. Is it um, ASML? Bingo. And ASML is basically a monopoly on EUV and DUV lithography systems, which produce the chips for companies like TSM and Intel. Wow, damn, it's almost $900. Is it a buy? I was hoping you'd ask me that. But before we go into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out our, on our weekly content. And as always, you will have an important index level for next week. So as we mentioned, ASML makes the machineries for chips manufacturers, and they also provide software and services to go with the hardware to mass produce chips. So ASML is not as famous as AMD or NVIDIA, but I think it deserves the attention since it has a deeper barrier of entry. Hmm, I'm all about barriers of entry. ASML is the only EUV lithography system maker. And when I hear dot 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 only, I'm automatically interested in the company. Yep, irreplaceability is what makes ASML special. The two biggest competitors in this space are Nikon and Canon, but they don't even make EUVs, they make DUVs, which are producing chips at a much larger wavelength compared to EUVs. ASML owns 100% of EUV market and 88% of the DUV market. That's crazy, right? Yep. According to data, the global sales of lithography machines in 2020 will be around 413 units. Out of these 413, 258 will come from ASML, or 62, around 63% of the total market share worldwide. In terms of sales, ASML would monopolize 91% of the market. Looking at Q2 net sales for this year, 4.02 billion euro, which is about 20.8% year over year growth. And the gross profit grew about 27.5% year over year to 2.4 billion. The gross margin is ridiculous at 50.9%. For a machinery producer, a 50% gross margin is very impressive. Looking at the past five quarters, the, gro uh, the gross margin is very consistent as well. Not only sales and margin, ASML's net income, operating income are very nice year over year. And additionally, this growth stock pays dividend too. Surprising, right? Uh, 1.55 euro per share in Q2, even though it's not much, but it's honest. Also, check out the annual dividend growth as well as shares buybacks trend. This company cares about its investors. Absolutely. And the company forecasted net sales of 5.2 billion to 5.4 billion euros for Q3 with gross margin between 51 and 52 percent and for the entire year of 2021 the company expects net sales growth by around 35 percent and gross margin between 51 to 52 percent that means they are very optimistic on this year's revenue growth to answer your question earlier is asml a buy let's take a look at valuations this year, the estimated PE is about 55, with the estimated revenue growth of about 41%. And for 2022, the analyst estimates PE at about 45, with revenue growth of 18%. I believe the expectation is a little bit too high, and we can already see it from Q2 of this year. ASML barely hit analyst estimated EPS and missed estimated revenue. It kind of makes sense though, it's been reporting a strong earnings, which always leads to unrealistic expectations. Another thing we should worry about though, due to tension between US and China, ASML might not be able to sell to Chinese market anymore. So they will lose between 10 to 20% in revenue when that happens. Fortunately, that likely won't happen next year. Well, I'm just being very honest here. I love the number. And at this stage, most of the chip manufacturing is inseparable 
from lithography machines, and this company could potentially be a long-term holding. What do you think? I agree. They literally have no competition in this regard in their product line, and obviously, the antitrust law cannot come into force here because the entire semiconductor market is practically in the hands of this company. Uh, TSMC is ASML's biggest customer, and they are planning to boost its capital expenditures by sixty percent. And Samsung and all the chip making peers in South Korea are also likely to increase their capital expenditure by twenty percent. A lot of that spending will go toward new lithography systems. ASML stock might look a little pricey at nearly forty times four PE, but based on their stable growth rate, I'm not sure if the stock can surge for another hundred to two hundred percent over the next few years. But I think it will outperform the broader market. What do you think about that? Um, yeah, but maybe we can wait for a little bit and wait until another tech sell off. When is that going to be? I don't know, but this may be one of the best long term plays on the sem- semiconductor market. This is such a hidden gem, but hopefully our short analysis can help you get a little more familiar with this company, and you know be able to make a, an educated decision. All right, let's take a quick look at this Nasdaq daily chart. What is this looking like to you? It looks like a rising wedge to me, a classic textbook bearish pattern. So. Um, it is implying that we are going to have a slightly bigger pullback. Well, we'll see. Next week's Fed meeting is quite important. We should be able to get a better sense of direction as they are going to provide some clarity on the outlook for tapering and interest rates. Well, hopefully. That's right. You know, be sure to tune in on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, looking at the shorter time frame, last Nasdaq has been bouncing back and forth between. Fifteen thousand five hundred twenty-five and fifteen thousand three hundred twenty. A ping pong match between the bulls and the bears. Friday's low is going to be the first support into next week, and if not, likely Nasdaq will test around fourteen thousand seven hundred and eighty. Nasdaq closed near the support on Friday, and the S and P is not doing so hot either. Closed the week slightly above the fifty moving average. The fifty moving average has been very effective support for the S and P five hundred this year. We have tested it multiple times, and each time is a buying opportunity. Well, maybe this will be another one too. So if you have to pick a stock that is under twenty dollar and hold it until your retirement, what company would it be? Right now, hmm, probably Rocket Mortgage. Ticker is RKT. Um, you know, real estate will forever be around, and RKT is supposed to be simplifying the mortgage process. Likely, this will change though if charge point drops below twenty. Right now, it's sitting around twenty one. Okay, I like that. Um, if I have to pick one, I probably will bet my money on Ford. Their stock price is trading in the single digit not too long ago. I think Ford is incredibly cheap right now and have a huge upside potential. With EVs as its catalyst, and they are planning to invest about forty billions in EVs and battery cells by two thousand twenty-five to speed up their transition to EVs. This is some big move, and I'm loving it. I think I can bet on their EV future. But what do you think about EVs having a lot of competitors now, like Lucid, Tesla, and you know other Polestar? Everyone's getting into EV market. That's a very good point, and Ford do have a very loyal customer base, and they known to sell the most truck in the United States. With the full transition into EV, um, I I I just think that people's interest in buying trucks will be will only goes up. They do have their own niche in their product, and able to you know get a good percentage of market shares. That's true. Americans do like Ford. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful. Feel free to give us a like and subscribe for more content like this.